When you are getting started in the .NET world, it is very confusing on what you should learn or what you should avoid. If you are stuck with legacy items and programming in .NET, you will be confused on what are the basic fundamentals that you should learn in 2025 as a .NET developer to grow further in your programming journey. In this video, I will answer all of those questions. My name is Brugain and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you will be notified when I release a new video and it will help the channel grow. Now .NET is an open source platform for building different type of applications. But when you are programming, you need to first select a programming language. .NET supports different languages like C Sharp, F Sharp, and Visual Basics. In today's world, you should only and only be using C Sharp. If you see a job opening that mentions VB.NET or F Sharp, then I would skip that and simply move on to the next one. If you are in a job that is using Visual Basics or F Sharp, I would highly suggest to make the transition if you want to grow in a career as a .NET developer. VP.NET and F Sharp are very old languages, so if a company is still using them, it's high time and you should be seriously considering moving to a role that will give you exposure to C Sharp or maybe a different company. So that being said, the only language you should be using with .NET will be C Sharp. Next thing is the type of application that you will be building as a .NET developer. Now majority of the application falls under two categories, desktop application and web application. Now there is also mobile app development that .NET is trying to move into using .NET MAUI, but right now majority of them will fall under desktop or web application. There might be job openings in desktop application using Windows Forms or WPF, but it is very limited. If I am starting as a .NET developer and if I was offered a job in that domain, I would politely say no and consider other openings or other position. Reason is when you are looking for a new job, growth and future job market is something that is very critical. And personally, I do not see a very bright future for desktop application. So if I was a developer who is working with desktop application, I would definitely start to slowly transition myself into a web developer role. That being said, the next thing is .NET domain itself. When it comes to any programming languages, there are certain version and .NET had old version, which some of the companies are still using. If you see reference to .NET 3.5, .NET Standard or .NET 4.8.1, then stay away from that job openings or those project. .NET 4.8 is a legacy .NET framework and .NET team has rewritten the entire framework and they called it .NET Core and after that they rebranded it to just .NET after version 5. The current .NET version is .NET 9 which was released in November 2024. So you should look for companies or project that are using either .NET Core or any version greater than .NET 5. Now we have finalized the programming language as C Sharp and web application in .NET using the new .NET Core or framework version of .NET 6 Plus. The next step would be learning ASP.NET MVC but before you dive into that, you should have a basic understanding of web application. And for that, it is critical to understand HTML, CSS and JavaScript. When it comes to CSS, I would also recommend learning Bootstrap or Tailwind. That way you have a little bit of experience on integrating third-party CSS libraries. But for anyone who is programming in a web application, HTML, CSS and JavaScript also plays a very critical role. I will not go crazy understanding all the CSS stylings because it is a monster by itself, 
but you should know the common syntax and styling and that will be good enough. Now back to the main topic. When it comes to .NET, I will focus on ASP.NET MVC. Stay away from other fancy project type like Razor Pages, .NET MAUI or Blazor. You first have to understand the basic fundamentals of .NET and nothing else will teach you the basic fundamentals better than a .NET MVC application. Once you master that, then you can explore anything else. .NET MVC is the most widely used project type in .NET and it is also very critical to understand fundamentals and master that before you move to anything else in the .NET domain. So when it comes to .NET MVC, I have listed few of the important things that comes to my mind but this is not a comprehensive list. MVC stands for Model, Views and Controllers. You should understand that and how all three of them works with each other. You should look into routing in an MVC application. What are models? What are view models? Dependency injection and solid principles. Solid principles are generic for any programming language but then you should also understand temp data, view back, view data and session in a .NET application. When you work with database or data, you need to understand entity framework and link queries. Finally, you need to understand controllers and how to write APIs in .NET. With that, you will encounter multiple verbs like get, post, put, delete and how to configure CRUD operation using API endpoints. Now the topics that I have mentioned here are very basic. As you move forward in a real world application, you will need more things, but these are the basic basic fundamentals that you should be comfortable with. After that, in any web application, we have database that will host all the data. When it comes to .NET, you should always go for SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. Do not go with other database like MySQL or Postgres or anything else. Most of the time when a company is using .NET, the partner for database is SQL Server. So make sure to learn that and it will go a long way in your programming journey as a .NET developer. Also, like I said before, you should learn on how to interact with database using Entity Framework Core as well. Finally, when it comes to a journey of a .NET developer, you should learn Azure and the basic Azure services like Azure Blob Storage, Azure Function and deploying things to Azure App Services. They are very commonly used and in today's world, cloud is everything. For deployment, very few companies are using local deployment servers. Most of them prefer Azure because it is quick saves time and resources. Finally, I will urge every software developer to have some understanding of source control. Most commonly used cloud-based source control is GitHub and you should learn the basic fundamentals of Git using GitHub. That brings the big picture of what you should learn as a .NET developer in 2025. Now there is one last thing that I will mention. With all of the .NET framework and .NET umbrella, there are typically two types of .NET application. One will be a complete or full stack .NET project where .NET MVC will be used for front end and back end. The other one is a single page application where front end is done using JavaScript framework like Vue, React or Angular and the back end is done using .NET APIs. Once you master .NET MVC, I will also recommend you to learn one of the popular JavaScript framework and if you are in the .NET domain, my preference will be Vue or React, React being most common but Vue is also getting popularity. If you know the basic fundamentals of one of the front-end JavaScript framework, then learning or adapting to some other framework depending on your role is not a big task. But the first goal as a .NET developer should be to learn everything that I have mentioned in the .NET umbrella 
and after that I will also recommend one of the front-end JavaScript framework. Now enough talk. One critical thing for any developer is to stop talking and get their hands dirty. For your first project, I would highly recommend building an anti-air application using .NET MVC and then deploying that to Azure App Services using Azure SQL Database. Even if it's not an anti-air, start with a basic CRUD website where you will interact with database and get your hands dirty. That would be a perfect entry as a .NET developer before you dive and explore further. In the video description, I have provided some links of my detailed courses on the individual topics to help you kickstart your programming journey in the exciting world of .NET. I hope you enjoyed this video and for more exciting videos for a .NET developer, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in some other videos. If there are some things that you feel I missed as a .NET developer, make sure to mention that in the comment. That way I will respond back and we will see where that goes. I hope to see you guys in some other programming videos. Till then, happy coding!